Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's session. Um, with me today, I've got um, myself, Melissa Sibben, Christine Stain, who is from Dynamic Consciousness Coaching, and we've got Neil Bossman. For today's session, we thought, you know, being a business owner means that you must go through peaks and valleys and deal with life in general. And in this session, Neil is going to take us through his own experiences and share some insights into staying motivated. Hence, our, the title of our session, Motivation Mondays. So, a little bit about Neil Bossman. He is a conflict and dispute resolver. He has experience in law, commercial and related industries, human resources, industrial relations, conciliations, mediations, arbitrations, CCMA, bargaining councils, and um, So he's spent about 30 years in, in Budvest McCarthy. He is an, as an HR manager, but he's also about passionate about community support and involvement. And he is the proud supporter of Berea Albion Football Club and Academy. And the facilities at Cougar Park in Pretoria, West South Africa, is where they holistically develop 35 young underprivileged youth annually by educating, housing, accommodating, feeding, clothing, training, and developing them for a better future life. So thank you, Neil, for joining us today and a very warm welcome to you. Thank you, Melissa. So tell us, Neil, a little bit about yourself and you can have the floor. I'm not really a person who sort of talks about myself. So first of all, thank you for the introduction and what you shared with me. You know, following our chat the other day, you thought I might be able to share something with some people. So I'm going to do my very best to hopefully live up to your expectation and endeavor to share bits and pieces of my life. First of all, let me kick off by saying I like very much the name of your little business happy factory because it sounds to me like that's where we manufacture and generate happiness and happiness is what it's all about happiness is what we all need to be motivated happy people are motivated people and it's up to each one of us we have the body the mind the soul to make ourselves happy and to create happiness around us to help to motivate ourselves and to motivate others around us. That's what we're here for. That's what we should be here for. It's a bit of what I, you've indicated already that I do. I'm involved in a number of charities and community projects where I'm involved in assisting and helping and driving and motivating those organizations to continue to do the work that they so do and that is so much needed out there and so desperate. But Coming back to what we're talking about, sort of motivation, happiness, succeeding. Success to me is peace of heart, peace of mind. Each one of us has it in ourselves to be able to achieve that success, to be able to achieve peace of heart, peace of mind, to work towards achieving that which will help us to be happy people, have happy people around us, and motivate. At my son Donovan's wedding, the MC, which was his brother-in-law, when he introduced me to speak, he said, here comes Neil, the only person I know who's never had a bad day in his life. <laughs> and that is very much the way I try to see life and to adopt an attitude towards life and to encourage people around me to adopt that. You know, the sad thing about being, it's called unhappy or unmotivated, is that you will allow yourself to get into a downward toxic spiral, as opposed to continually rather uplifting yourself, uplifting the people around you, encouraging people to have that smile on their face, To enjoy life, to participate in life. 
my sister, brother, and I were very fortunate to grow up with my six years old. My dear father, he passed away in 2008. But amazing, wonderful people that taught us a bit of what I'm sharing with today. How to see the happy side, participate in life, and how to contribute to life. Not what can we get out of it, what can we put into it. And we grew up like that, all three of us, and we've since happily married to similar people, happy to say, and we've got children and grandchildren. And 7th of February next year, I'll be happily married for 40 years to my darling wife. And we remain, again, happy, motivated people. My darling Debbie is as involved in many, many projects and schools and church organizations and communities, again, assisting and uplifting the community. It's what we would want to do. And one can continually remain happy doing these things, sharing with others, giving others an opportunity to grow themselves, for them to be motivated, for them to be happy, to hopefully continue to share that and spill that over to others. You know, Leo Biscalia, some of the older folk might remember him from time gone by, used to say wonderful things on, on motivation and on helping people to grow. But one of the most important things that I took out of his messages always was for people, be kind to people. And he used to say, if you can't be kind to people, please don't hurt them. And that is the sort of spirit that one wants to try to adopt in your own self, in your own life. Be kind to yourself. If you can't be kind to yourself, don't hurt yourself. Give yourself that opportunity to grow. Give yourself that opportunity to develop. Give yourself that opportunity to look out for opportunities. For those of you who are out there in the business world, even in just your day-to-day -day work opportunities. Look for opportunities. Look for growth opportunities. Are you reading? Are you studying? Are you learning something every day of your life? Is there something new that's coming into your life? Are you sharing with others what you learn, what you understand? Are you able to help yourself to grow, to help other people to grow? You need to be have a positive attitude towards life. The, I've talked already about the toxic downward spiral. That's all that negativity does. It doesn't help. Take a, an opportunity of every day of your life looking for what you, can you be thankful for? What can you appreciate? What can you, to use an example, wake up in the morning thanking God that you are waking up because many are not going to wake up. That you had a bed to sleep in, many never had that bed to sleep in. That you're going to jump into a nice hot shower, not many people have that opportunity. That you're going to enjoy breakfast and, and, and. Are you continually looking throughout your day at yourself and your benefits, your happiness, your joy, your motivation, and thinking of those who don't have those opportunities, who are not experiencing the pleasure, the joy that you're experiencing. It's time that we should all be getting out there to do just that. And maybe, just maybe, this COVID-19 has helped many, many people to do just that. It has helped the world to come to a little bit of a standstill and for us to look at ourselves and say, is that what we should have been doing? Should we not change? Should we not do it differently? Should we not do it in another way? It's important that you can. One would want to have a look at accepting the challenge of life. We all have to understand, and we see it now with COVID. We are not in control. Everything in life is difficult. It is an uphill struggle. It was never meant to be a free will. It was never meant to be easy. It is up to us to make it better. It is up to us to accept those challenges. Take up that challenge. 
do better. Strive for more. Work harder. Nothing wrong with working hard. Nothing wrong. I'm 66 years old. I get up early hours of the morning, go to bed late hours at night, and I do that seven days a week. Contributing, giving back, doing what you can. And again, back to saying, everything in life is a challenge. My real favorite motto that I live by and that I drive towards is throw me to the wolves and I will come back leader of the pack. And that is the approach that you would want to take. I'll accept the challenge. I'll accept what's being thrown at me, but I will come back leader of the pack. I will show myself that I can succeed that I can achieve, that I can get to where I am. It's not for others, it's for me, for myself to be able to grow, to be able to develop, to be a better person, to help others to be better people, to help others to be able to enjoy what they've done. Enjoyment and happiness and motivation. We should be celebrating. We should continually be celebrating things. We as a family, consistently every four, five, six years, we would have a very large gathering. I live on a small holding, two and a half hectare property, beautiful place, lots of facilities. And we have a couple of hundred people around, friends, families, next door neighbors, the community, to share with them the opportunity of celebrating life. And we then look back over the last few years and then celebrate that and give other people opportunities to celebrate life celebrate the opportunity that you've been able to succeed that you've been able to achieve again back to challenges life leave it behind you whatever you can the bad news the unhappiness the unpleasantness the difficulties let's leave that behind us having come from the motor industry a lovely example that i give to people consistently when you're driving in your car, it's got a very large windscreen, large, to be able to see up the front. That's what you should be able to see. Look ahead, see what's coming. That's what a windscreen is for. Yes, there are three little rear view mirrors, but they are little rear view mirrors. <laughs> you need to see very little of what's going on behind you. Leave that behind. Yes. Let's remember, let's carry those memories with us. Let's pick up on the experience. Let's use those experiences to grow, to become better. But leave the difficult stuff, the bad stuff, leave it behind you. What happened just now, yesterday, last week, last month, that's gone. You can't watch, carry that with you. Leave it alone. I have a habit which I took from a young child already. When I wake up from a dream in the night, nine times ten, you have funny feeling in your stomach. I leave that behind. I don't even try and think about what the dream was about. It means nothing. It's not real. It's false. It never happened. It's not going to happen. Leave it behind you. Look out that front windscreen, look to the front, look for the positive things, look for the growth opportunities, leave everything else behind. Joy and appreciate some things. Your good memories, your good experiences, carry them with you. Learn from them, grow from them, write them down as school fees. We've paid our school fees. We're able to get up there and enjoy. I love to be happy and enjoy things. My kids love that. It's just the way things are. My son, again, same Donovan that recently got married. He runs food businesses down in Cape Town. And in chatting to Donovan, and he was explaining to me his plans of how he's going to grow his businesses and do various things. And I sent him a WhatsApp message, which said, you're going to be rich, my son. And his immediate response was, but dad, I'm already rich money will only be an added bonus. And if that's the kind of approach that one can adopt, that you can be rich all the time. 
Never have a bad day. Make a good thing out of a day. Make it. Make it a work. Make your life better. Achieve more because you can. And I know many people are saying, but Neil, it's because you are okay. It's because you're in a happy place. It's because you are motivated. What about me who's down here struggling? What about me who's just lost my job? This morning I've been talking to a number of people that have recently lost their job because of what's going on in the world. And the same thing there. I'm saying to them, you have to just understand and accept what's happened has happened. You cannot change it. You can't do it differently. No point in running off to want to have a challenge or a fight. Accept what's happened. Look for the light. See the opportunity. Because there are opportunities out there. Many, many, many opportunities. Look for them. Look for those opportunities. Another side to me, which I again have got from my wonderful father, may his soul rest in peace, and my mother, were values. Ethical values. Honesty integrity, kindness, generosity, sharing, important parts of one's life. In Pretoria, yeah, a very wealthy man, I'm not going to give names, but we can use a name like Mr. Jobs from Apple. Those people on their deathbed, in their early 50s, as was Mr. Jobs as well, all they're talking about is family. And what they would rather have done more with family. What they would have done more enjoying time with family as opposed to trying to chase the extra rand or the dollar. In a lot of the communities, projects that I'm involved in, old age homes, frail care centers, unmarried mothers, paraplegics, and, and, and I have a lot to do with death, sadly. And not one person have I yet met who says, I should have bought that property in Midrand. I should have built that. I should have done this. It is always about family. It is always about what we're talking about. Happiness it is always about sharing, about pleasure, about other people when people are dying. So why should we wait for that when we could be doing it today, all the time, every day? That's the way we should be living our life. And again, back to what I'm saying, with lots of ethical values. Honesty, integrity, kindness, generosity, sharing. Keep those at the forefront of you. You can only do well. You won't fail. You won't let yourself down. You won't let people around you down. You won't let your family down. You'll be able to look forward, look through that windscreen, and have very little time to look into the rear view mirror. Because if you are motivated, if you are happy, if you are out there doing things that will make you positive, that will make you happy, that will make you motivated, you'll be a better person, a much better person. And again, as I've said, it's not what you get out of life. It's what you put into life. That's what we're here for giving back to life, giving back to life. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks, Neil. I loved it. I really loved all whatever you've said, but you know, um, just around the, the be kind to people. And if you can't be kind to people, be kind to yourself. Uh, and if you can't be kind to yourself, then don't hurt yourself. I, I love that. I think it's so profound uh, because it, you know, it goes right back to begin almost. Um, I also loved what you said about appreciation. Um, you know, it's the beginning of gratitude and it's the beginning of being able to create some kind of motivation for yourself and, and, and having a positive mindset. Um, so it's the basics of, of positive psychology. Start with the gratitude list and a gratitude journal. And then the other thing which I think was so profound for, for the world in which we live in now uh, around embracing change. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a change manager by trade as well. And, and for me, if you can't accept it and then take it on as a challenge and see challenges as a, as a good thing, 
as something that you can learn from and having uh, or being able to give you growth and opportunities then makes a world of difference in how you engage with whatever it is in in front of you so uh, thank you i really appreciate the the time that you've taken for us uh, i've got just one question um from your time in in corporate you know you've spent what 30 some odd years in in Bidvest and uh, as an hr manager and i know that you now do uh, provide some kind of consulting um for the consultants out there the people that are business owners that are still going through the change in this time and then also having to support um our, our corporate uh, customers out there is there any pieces of advice that you can give to people um, in also staying motivated during this time uh, and being able to sort of deliver services? So what are people experiencing out there in, in the corporate world and how can we as consultants support them? Okay. So Melissa, let me start off by <laughs> saying what you and other consultants don't want to hear. Everything I've done my entire life, I've done for free. I've never charged anybody one cent, one rand, and I never will. Anybody gives me, and there are many people that I've helped, who've given me money, I've taken that and given it to some charity or community project, wherever necessary. So that's the first thing you don't want to hear. But that's the spirit that I have, and because of that, many, many things will continually come back to me. But to answer your question, for the consultants, there is a major, major need for supporting people, as I was saying, folks I chatted to already just this morning. Yeah. I'm involved, as you say, in the corporate world, and I'm currently in the process of closing down major portions of major corporations. And it's affecting a lot of people. The one, there are two exercises I'm busy with at the moment right now. The one is one and a half thousand, the other one's 1,200. In 2,700 people with the swipe of a pen will be out of jobs. Those people are desperate for some assistance of some kind. All those consultants out there, whatever you provide, those people are looking for that assistance. One of the people that I spoke to this morning, I'm now out of my job. They've told me to go. What now? That's the first side of it. Similarly, I've been told to get out of my accommodation. I can no longer pay the rent. I've not paid for three months. Help me, Neil. What do I do? Type of thing. Very difficult to assist. Sadly, one's best advice is you have to accept, move on as we were chatting and look for the opportunities going forward. But those consultants out there are able to assist in many, many ways supporting those people, counseling them, advising, hopefully looking to find alternative employment, other job opportunities, keeping them as best as what one can, motivated to look for the opportunities, to strive to achieve where they have in the past and now feel quite hopeless because it is not through any means of their own that's what's happened. It's a no, flop, no fault situation that we all find ourselves sitting in. That this is not what we wanted. This is not what we expected. We have to accept that that's what happened. Many people are... So you're going to say something, Melissa? No. No, uh, I was going to say um, that's exactly, I think, you know, you're, you're spot on. There are people out there that, that need assistance. It's again, um, to your point of the growth and, and opportunities by both parties, I suppose. Uh, people need to look at something that probably didn't exist before and to find new ways of engaging, giving back and collaborating um, in general. I think this is a great time for change and for, the, for people to find different ways of doing things. And Melissa, it also goes to the employer. The employers are finding themselves in as difficult position. They are also not used to doing what they're doing. They are used to productivity, profits coming up, 
you know, financial statements being delivered, looking at numbers, growing their businesses. Mm -hmm. They are not used to businesses that have come to a standstill, businesses that are stagnant, that because of that are now closing down certain portions of their business, certain divisions, certain business operations, certain people being affected. So again, for the consultants out there, lots of opportunities with the employers. Mm -hmm. What can we do to assist you? You talk about change. How can we help you to change? To use my son Donovan again down in Cape Town as an example. In their food business, where they do extremely well, with the closure comes to a standstill. However, the first moment of opportunity when they were saying you can do takeaways, they immediately, although they had a small takeaway side of their business, the Uber type operations, they now focused wholly on only that. And as we sit here now, with only the takeaway, they've achieved two thirds of their best turnover in just doing the takeaway. So with doors going to be opening in due course, they are now going to have an extra avenue of income, which they're going to continue to drive as hard as what they have been. And they will now continue to drive their businesses when the doors open. So again, they've looked for the opportunity, they've seized it and hopefully it will help them to grow their business in different ways. So again, from the consultants, the employers, help them to look for opportunities to see what else could we do? What else can you achieve in the way you are running your business? And many people, I'm seeing people that have given up job opportunities. And again, we talked about Facebook earlier, but I've seen people who are out there now baking cakes, as an example, you know, making pies. And, and doing a reasonable income that they're actually able to put food on the table. So there are opportunities out there for the consultants. Thanks, Neil. Christine, do you have any comments or questions? Um, Neil, what you are doing and, and how you are supporting the people that you support, I, am, I have so much respect for you and thank you very much for doing that, um, assisting the community. And I agree with everything you said. And I also want to say that you know, you, you, you spoke about motivating. Um, we spoke about happiness. All those things together with empowerment are all things people cannot give us. Those are things that comes from inside us. And we, we make the, there's a general misconception that things will make us happy. Other things, other people will make us happy. Not the truth. If we want to, to do and have a different outcome, we need to change from the inside. We need to ask different questions. It's not, why did I lose my job? It's, what are the opportunities now? Just small changes in the way that you ask for the things in your life will, will change your whole perception, the things you look at. And by doing that, you will create the opportunities that maybe that there's a door that opens up for you. Maybe you've lost your job and yes, it's sad, but maybe you need to look around and turn around and look for the one that's opening up. Um, also, the the we we tend to, as humans to to so try to control everything, and we need to let go of the stuff that's not in our control. Neil, like you said, there's nothing you can do about it. It's not our fault. It's not your fault that you lost your job. It's not your employer's fault that you lost your job. Let go of it. Focus on that that you can control. And, and you're correct, but I also believe that one needs to try as hard as you can to become that master of your own destiny. Oh, yes. Although you are not in total control, but you need to manage yourself. You need to drive yourself to become the architect of your own success. And again, I say to you, it's like you say, from your inner self, your peace of heart, peace of mind, get that right and you'll get going in the right direction. Correct. I mean, some, a lovely story, it's similar to this time, but in 1990, with a change coming in the country, um, we were with the motor businesses moving a lot of our main businesses all the way down Iloff Street out of the city center into the surrounding areas where the businesses were in fact growing. And we closed down an operation there and a young lady, and when I say young, she was only 38 but she'd worked for our company for 22 years. Wow. She started as a 16 year old girl, as an admin lady, today was still an admin lady at that point in time. 
after 22 years service, only one job to be told your job's gone because this business is closing down. Very, very sad. Happened to speak to her two days later and she came back and I use this example so often. That same night she got home from work. A friend down the road who ran a dance school had come and said to her, my dance school has become too big. You were a great dancer. Would you not think of giving up your job to come and become a dance teacher? And today she is that dance teacher, a partner running a dance school, Johannesburg Way. So those are all the opportunities. And yes, it doesn't come to everybody, but look for those opportunities. I love that example. It's such a good news story and, yeah. and so very relevant. I think, you know, it's, it's about, it's your mindset. Um, I think that, you know, even as an entrepreneur, having the right mindset um, is, is key to your survival and how you see uh, growth and opportunities. Because if you're not looking for it, you may, you may never see it. So, so yeah. It's a bit of what you and I were chatting before we went online with everybody. Like I was saying to you, that's the kind of person I am as much as I have a legal background. I believe the only reason there are rules is to break. We make <laughs> rules to be broken. And that's the way one's got to live. That's getting out. That's breaking the mold. That's getting out of the box. My children loved growing up with me. They came to me and asked me anything. The answer was yes. I said, you want a proper answer? Go and ask your mother. You want to go somewhere with the answer is yes. You want to do something? Yes. That's my style. That's, I still have that approach to life. If anybody asks me anything, the answer is yes. I check two things. If it's going to cost me money, can I afford it? And does it fit into my diary? That's all. I don't understand saying no to things. I don't understand saying no to questions, to answers. Why would you when you can always say yes? Always say yes. I love that. That that I think that's such an excellent um, you know quote to actually close with today because it's a Monday. It's going to set the train for the rest of the week. I'm going to see whether I, I can go through the whole week without saying no. It's called the latest disruption. <laughs> Sorry? It's called innovative disruption. Correct. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Neil. Um, we, we, from Christine, myself, and BNI Vesuvius, we, we really, you know, thank you for your time. Uh, and your lovely words of encouragement. It really, I, I really do feel uh, very motivated and it wasn't the coffee. <laughs> it, Melissa, it's an absolute pleasure. And again, to anybody out there who is in need of any assistance advice, I'll do it. And again, I repeat, I do it for free. I'll just do it for the, for the well-being and the health of the community. So it'll only be a pleasure to assist anybody who needs any assistance with pleasure. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Neil. And it was an honor meeting you today. Thank you. Thank you for yeah, your time. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, Melissa. Thank you. Go well. Bye. God bless. Bye-bye.